Hello and welcome back. We're on question number seven now. I understand you have a background in radiography, cardiology and paramedic work in London. You're not a doctor, but you teach doctors and you're one of only about 600 people in the world that are qualified to use this scanning system. Where did you qualify? Well, as I've already mentioned, uh, this was developed in America by doctors and computer experts. It underwent eight years of clinical trials with the American Food and Drug Administration. And uh, I had to go out to America and study it and also uh, to do the exams out there. So I'm licensed by them. Uh, and that uh, more or less covers the world, quite frankly, because they're the toughest licensing body in the world. Yes, I have taught doctors. I've taught other people who are not doctors, specialists in alternative medicine also. And um, I don't do much anymore because I'm just far too busy with my own work around the world. I have a background in radiography. I, I, I was there for a year uh, at a major London teaching hospital. I got bored with it, quite frankly. Um, went on for a few years to work as an assistant uh, to the head of the department uh, of cardiology in another major teaching hospital. And uh, then I went on to do uh, many years in paramedics around London. So I do know an awful lot about the human body. In fact, I probably know more than your average doctor, quite frankly. I've certainly been out there on a the sharp end. And I've certainly saved more lives than any doctor I've ever met. I'm sure there must be some out there uh, that have done better than me. I'm sure there are, but uh, I've not met them yet. Uh, so there's not much I need to be told about the human body. Okay, question eight. Is one scan enough to clear all our health problems, or do we need a separate scan for each problem we suffer with? One scan is enough. When you get the brain working properly, it'll fix the migraines, the eczemas, uh, and, and the other things that people get. You could come in with, with just one problem. You could come in with half a dozen, but one scan is all you need. You just go away and stop giving your brain a problem, and it stops giving you a problem. It really isn't difficult to think about it. Uh, and it's so simple. Just stop giving your brain a problem. Uh, and half a dozen problems will disappear in one go. It really is clever, isn't it? Number nine. Do certain foods cause similar health problems? For example, if, say, 10 people were intolerant to mushrooms, would they all get headaches? It's an interesting one. No, they wouldn't. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, they've all got different brains. So a mushroom might well be causing a problem with one person and giving them a headache, but another person it could be giving them e eczema or depression or, or, or pain in the body, uh, in the joints, or anything you can think of, quite honestly. Um, every brain's different. So uh, the answer to that is no. Um, um, everybody would have their own individual problems. Number 10. If a person didn't actually eat a certain food, would their intolerance to it still show up on the scan? Yes, of course it would. Um, I do check things that people never even heard of. They come up, uh, run through a, a bunch of things, and often they'll say, oh, I've never heard of that. But, um, they can be intolerant to them. Of course they can. What foods do you generally find cause the most health problems? Now this one will get you sitting on the edge of your seats. Uh, vegetables. Vegetables cause the most health problems. Uh, most people would say, God Almighty, you know, vegetables are good for me. Well, you've been brought up to believe that uh, by your parents and by society in general. Uh, and all the people out there who are shouting at you, telling you that vegetables are good for you, but they've all had parents too, and they've grown up believing it. And uh, an awful lot of them, of course, will also make money selling these things. I'm not, I've got nothing against vegetables. I, I eat some, don't eat very many. I ate those, maybe in onions. Don't eat much about much else. I have nothing against them, but I'm just telling you the facts. I've treated and cured about 10,000 people now, so if I don't know, then nobody does, quite frankly. Vegetables are the group of foods that cause the most health problems. And then you wonder why you're getting all these problems, because as you get older, as we get older, people tend to try and eat more healthily, inverted commas. Uh, and when in fact what they're doing is eating worse and more dangerous things for the brain, and mostly they'll be called vegetables. Read my book, it's all in there. Why doctors don't make you healthy. Check it out on my website healthscan.co.uk Once you have found the foods that are causing the problems, do you do people stop them straight away? No, they don't. Because like any drugs to any drug addict, if you stop things too quickly, you can get withdrawal symptoms. So what I say to people is it takes a lifetime to create the problem uh, in the body. So take a month or so to come off the foods gently and let the brain change uh, and get used to not having these drugs. Do patients only need one uh, to see you once in order to become healthy, or is it a course of treatment? No, once is enough, as I mentioned before. Once is more than enough. Uh, provided you go away and follow it properly, and if you don't, then there's no point in coming in the first place. Uh, because when you leave the health scan clinic, you have responsibility for your own health. Uh, and that's the first time in your life you've had that. Uh, and if you don't want to correct it, well, don't blame anybody else. 
and uh, up until you've had your scan done, everybody uh, that I've ever treated, their health has been in the hands of other people, and that's why they've been getting worse, not better. There's no human being on this planet can give you the information that we get on the scan, because that information comes from your brain, and even you don't know what it is before you come in. So listen to human beings is a total waste of time, as, you, as people are finding out all over the world. I don't care who they are, I don't care whether doctors or professors or anybody else, they haven't got the faintest idea what's going on in their own brain when we talk about food intolerance, much less yours. So it's up to you to follow it and, and get the best from it, but one scan is enough. Are there any side effects when people have this scan done? Yes, so as I always answer, uh, yes there is, uh, they get better. Well that's a pretty good side effect. Huh? How many problem foods would you normally find in a typical scan? Well, I've mentioned it before, there is no typical scan. Uh, it can be one, it can be half a dozen, it can be ten, it can be fifteen. Uh, many of which, of course, you've probably not even eaten, but uh, at least you know they don't, they don't suit your brain, which is what you need to know. I know you test for about 200 everyday foods, but what happens if someone eats an unusual food on a regular basis? Can they get that checked also? Yes, of course. Uh, anything that's a bit weird or wonderful, I get people to bring it in, just in case it's not on my computer. I do have an awful lot of things on there, so it probably will be on there, but bring it in anyway, and we can run a test on it that way. It's not difficult. Can the patient reintroduce the problem foods again, or do they have to stay off them forever? No, you, you can go back on most of these things in about six months or so. Um, within a very short time of coming off the foods, within a month or six weeks or so, the brain's working properly because it's not getting the bad drugs hitting it on a daily basis or three or four times a week. So it runs your body properly and your health problems clear up. But equally, that computer in your head is now working properly. And uh, I say to people, stay off the diet for about six months or so. Uh, stay on the diet, I should say, for about six months or so. Uh, and give your brain time to really get into gear. And then when it's a new computer, it's repaired, it's fixed, as it will be, well and truly, it can handle things.